Now that we've talked a bit about primers, let's show you the application of, uh, of installing them. There's a couple of different methods. There are many good hand primers on the market. I know RCBS makes a little fantastic hand priming tool. Uh, but most of your reloading presses are going to come with a priming arm, and that's this cup. It's a little arm that swings up, and it's got a cup to hold the specific dimension primer you have. Uh, there should be one for small primers and one for large primers. Since we're doing a 3006 here, we've got the large primer cup installed. With your shell holder in place, you want to raise the ram and swing that arm up into that groove so that on the downward stroke you can see how that primer is going to be installed in the primer pocket. And what you have to do very easily and very simply, we've got the proper CCI number 200 large rifle primers. Place that with the anvil up into that primer cup, lower it just a bit so it's almost there. You've got a resized cleaned case. We're going to slide it into the shell holder and very gently we're going to push down until we feel that resistance and then seat it. What you want to do with your primer once it's installed is to verify with your fingernail that it's not sticking any higher than the edge of the case mouth. So, or uh, the case head. What you want to do is have it either slightly recessed or perfectly flush. Uh, that re avoids all risk of an accidental fire or a difficult to close bolt. And as, uh, as you can see, that's set just about perfectly flush or maybe a thousandth or two down. And that's the process. It, it's not very difficult. Uh, you just want to make sure you take your time and install them properly. Priming a pistol cartridge is the same process. Uh, here we have some 45 ACPs that I've already flared up and resized. Um, we're going to use a Federal number 150 large pistol primer. One little note of warning, and there's a lot of 45 ACP guys out there. Some brands of brass use a small pistol primer, not a large. Uh, it can be very dangerous trying to cram a large into a small, it won't go. So be very careful to sort your once fired brass before you try it. But again, like I say, the process is the same. Slide the case into the shell holder, lower the ram, and easy peasy, you should feel it pop in there nice and clean. And when you remove it, you can check it with your fingernail. This one is just slightly recessed, so you have no worries of a slam fire. Just wanted to illustrate that point about the 45 ACP cases. You can see the cartridge here on the right has a much smaller primer pocket than does the one on the left. Uh, the left cartridge will use a large primer, uh, pistol primer, while this one will use a small. It's very important, especially when, if you're going to roll on a, on a progressive press, to know that difference uh, so that you're not trying to jam the wrong size primer in the wrong size hole. It can, it can screw up your whole progressive press for the day, so sorting your brass is imperative. Powders. It's time to charge our case. For the 3006, we've chosen IMR4451 which is a relatively new powder. Uh, some of the data is limited as the, as the reloading manuals are being revised. But on Hodgdon's website, www.hodgdon.com, they've got good load data for the 3006. The minimum grains are 53.4 with a maximum load of 57.4. Uh, I've gone ahead and done some load development in my own 3006, and I found that an even 55 grains gives me the best accuracy with a 165 grain nozzle bullet. What we've got is the RCBS Charge Master, which we can easily dial in a load of 55 grains on the keypad. So once we zero the scale, we got an even zero reading. I'm going to push in 55.0 and hit the dispense button. That will dispense a charge of an even 55 grains. And you can see the machine kind of slows down and goes into a trickle mode as it gets pretty close. What it'll do is give us an audible beep when it reaches the proper weight of, of powder. There's our audible beep. As good as these digital scales are, and the RCBS Charge Master 1500 is a fantastic unit, I still like to check my charges every so often on a balance beam scale. I've got the RCBS 505 set up here. Uh, I've zeroed it and I've dialed it in to hold exactly 55 grains and if this machine has done its part that'll return to zero and give us the proper charge. Let's see how that balance beam works out. Let her level out. Looks like it's spot on. 
The next step is to take your resized primed case and use, uh, use the powder funnel. This is an RCBS powder funnel that is good for calibers of 22 up to 50. There's some graduations in there on the inside so it properly fits the case mouth. Slide it over the top of the case and just easily dispense your powder through the funnel into the case. Give it a tap to make sure no powder hangs up. And we've got a properly charged case. I, I know many reloaders that will charge all of their cases and then seat their bullets. However, as a measure of safety, when you're operating on a single stage press, I do it a little bit differently. And even though for our video purposes here at Gun Digest, we're gonna do it in a separate phase, when I'm home reloading for myself, every time I charge a case with powder, I then seat a bullet on top and press it in. Simply put, so that I know the case is charged, I can visually see the powder, and that it's not double charged. Because if I see powder, I know I just put it in and there's no risk of a double charge, say when we go to the 357 or the 45 ACP. Uh, there are several good features with the electronics, several good features with the balance beam. I like a balance beam because as I stated, gravity never wears out. However, for, uh, you know, for speed and, and ease of, of work, it's really hard to beat one of these electronic scales if you properly keep it adjusted. Uh, the Chargemaster 1500 comes with a different, uh, a couple of different scale weights, so you can very easily check your, uh, check your zero and make sure that things are, are proper. It also comes with a, a windscreen, which sounds silly, but because it's an electronic transducer to measure the, the weight of the powder, it's easily affected by breezes. So if, say if you're in your garage and, you know, summertime the windows are going or a fan's blowing, you might notice it'll fluctuate a little bit. Close that little wind gate and uh, you should have accurate loading.